So I got a new trade I'm going to share with you. It's a hot trade, and it looks to be where it's going to be one that we see a pop off this sell-off here. But this is also going to be a nice little educational video because I remember when I was studying for my Series 7, and actually when I did my Series 7, uh, I thought I knew about options until I lost my first account on one trade. And then I realized all those concepts about options that you learn about in the books are very vanilla and they don't really help you understand of how to apply and why apply certain situations or certain sh spreads and so forth, buy one to sell another in, uh, in real world uh, trading. So that's what we're going to cover in this video. Before we do, if you don't know, my name is Joshua Bellinger of CounterVest.com. Head over to CounterVest, sign up for my daily emails and also other videos that I don't post here on YouTube. I like YouTube, but I also want you to come over and join me over at countervest.com. And if you're on YouTube here, hey, leave a comment, uh, give it a thumbs up, give it a thumbs down. Before they give it a thumb, before they remove the thumbs down, give it a thumbs down if you choose to, uh, and also subscribe. So let's get right into it. So Beyond Meat here, I got a trade that Beyond Meat, even a vegan is going to love this one. Should have said that in the beginning, right? <laughs> uh, taking a look at this right here. What we're seeing here is that we saw a reaction uh, on earnings here. Uh, I don't know the expected move on this one, but this is a pretty big move. And the reason why it's on my radar is because uh, we are outside the Bollinger Bands here. And just a quick look here. I've talked about this in other videos. But one of the ways that we look at a sell-off in specific names, this doesn't apply to every stock. Uh, this, is a, a, this is a more heavily follow name. So we have that, what I refer to in different videos as a natural bid. Doesn't mean it's necessarily not going to go lower here, but it eventually the selling subsides because buyers come in. And what we've seen here in the last few times, if you just take a quick look here, is every time it's hitting the lower end of this Bollinger Band, which pierced through it, it subsides here and kind of lifts off. And we saw it back here. And if I go back here as well, I think in the last year it's, it's triggered four times. This is the fifth time that it's triggered here. So we get this big move here that uh, has triggered it. And this is the setups that I talk, uh, that I often talk about, waiting for things to trigger and then to be alert. A lot of people just turn on the screen. And when I was a broker, uh, my, uh, my, <laughs> my managing director would come up, and this is calling and selling. This is not trading at all. But um, he would say, oh, the money fair is not just going to pop out. And it's true. The money fair is just not going to pop out. But if you have different situations to alert you, and this being one of them, you can have situations that make better opportunities and have better bets that pay out in your favor when the money fairy does pop out, right? <laughs> so we got the, a big sell-off here. We get a big volume day here. And for a lot of people, they would say, hey, this is a bullish setup here. You know, typically on three days, you're going to see something, something on the, the um, three days for this to shake out because this is a pretty big move. And you get some short covering and you get some of that. But the next two days, you're probably going to see this kind of uh, um, settle down here. And what typically happens is we get a little bit of a snap up. We get settled, takes a little bit of time to settle, and then we get a snap back. Now, how that happens is going to be different for every stock. But understanding that phenomenon can help us understand how to structure a trade using options. So there's two ways to do this. I'm going to show you the way that I think that, I, that I'm looking to do it. I'm going to show you in, in the other way it would be just a lot, uh, a lot. Well, there's three different ways you could do it. Or actually, more, but the best ways uh, I'm going to discuss with you. So one of the ways that we, uh, or one of the ways, what I'm looking at on this and, and understanding the market and understanding options, and this is where the books don't tell you all this stuff. This is where you're going to have to have uh, somebody like myself on YouTube or somebody uh, that is knowledgeable, that has traded uh, millions of contracts, has done this for a long time, and understands the option game. And the option game on this one is where they don't tell you is that uh, when the stock is rallying, implied volatility is going to go lower, especially in a name like this. So what we want to do is we want to structure a trade that understands that aspect of trading. If you buy a call, yes, it could shoot up higher, but then you have, the, you have volatility eating away at it. So you're pushing forward and you're kind of getting resistance, and that's not what you want. Because if you knew it was going to shoot higher, you just buy stock. It's a much simpler way to do it, or you can do a spread. But the simplest way is to buy a stock but you don't know when it's going to pop or how high. The trade-off of that is buying a call, but then you have a call and you have to be your long, your long directionally, you're picking a direction, and you're also long volatility. And if prices go higher, volatility will come in, and that eats away at your profits. 
So one way we can do that, we can structure a trade that we can understand that. Now, do I think this is going to pop up higher right away? No, because that's not what we've seen. This can take some time. How many days? Well, I'm not quite sure. I want to capture a window. I want to create a net to, to have that. So that's what I'm looking at on this one, and we'll take a look here at the option chain. I know that's a, uh, it's a little bit, it's, you know, a little bit to explain it, but once you understand it, then it's a different story. So big sell-off here. It's a hard to borrow stock as well. Uh, so that's going to create some, uh, it's going to create some short covering. P people are short as well and possibly get some pe new people coming in. Uh, but that's not what we're looking at. You know, I mean, understanding this market structure or the structure of this stock is notable, but I'm just going to follow the system and, and trade it here. So what I'm looking at specifically is because that phenomenon of volatility coming in if prices go higher, what I want to do is I want to be short something in the near term. And then I want to be long something longer term because uh, the more sensitive, an option's more sensitive to time and decay in the shorter term. Longer term, it is not. So I can benefit from something that lifts higher off that. So here's what I have here. This is what's known as a diagonal. And what I'm looking at here, if we just close these options here, what I, what I want to sell is something within the 30-day cycle. So I'm buying, or I'm selling this 30-day cycle, and then I'm buying something in the January contract with 71 days. It gives me time for it to pan out, to move up higher, and, and then sell something above it. So it's almost, uh, if you want to think about it as, you know, almost as a covered call, but this is not a covered call. This is just, you know, I have something that has a higher delta, a higher premium, because if uh, you look here how I structured it, uh, what I'm looking at on this one is the 85. So this is the 8593 uh, diagonal. So I'm buying something that's closer to in the money and I'm selling something out of the money closer, capture some of that premium. So if you take a look here, it is on the 85, 525 by 570. And we look on this expiration here. And what I'm looking at on this one is to sell the 93. So there is a, uh, an eight point difference on this one. It's going to cost 425, and essentially what I'm looking for is this to move up and increase higher. Ideally, this would this would expire on the 29th or the 28th. Ideally, what would happen is that this is you know pennies, and this moves up higher here um, from it. So there is a ceiling on how far I want this to go. Do I think it's going to shoot? You know, back to the moon? No, that's not a moon play. What I'm looking for this is to rebound. How it rebounds and where it goes, uh, if we just take a look at a chart here, you know, we're looking at about another you know, 99, uh, you know, maybe 100 it snap, snaps back here. So I'm, I'm bullish short term on the fact that it just snaps back a bit and rallies, not, in, not essentially looking forward to you know, shoot back higher. The, the fundamentals or the, you know, all that stuff doesn't matter to me. What I'm looking at is it's oversold here. We probably and could see buyers. What we, what we've seen before is exactly that has happened when it's the the market has snapped or has sold off so aggressively from that expected move. It's pierced the Bollinger Bands. Then what happens is it kind of comes back in, reverts a bit, and then gets out of that. So that's what I'm looking for on this one. It is a more complicated trade, and complicated doesn't necessarily mean it's a bad thing. Complicated just means strategic. It's not hey we're going to buy calls here because that's not really the best way to <laughs> make money in the marketplace, trading options. Sure, you could get some big wins, but you're going to have a lot of stinkers. This is a strategic way of being able to understand buy and sell. And this is where you learn the basics of options and understand how to apply it in a way that you can create structured trades. This is how big boys trade. So that's what I have for you. Keep an eye on this one. How this will be managed is I am looking to ride this out and... I will be closing this near the expiration of the December 10th here. So I'm looking for this to rally, and I'm looking for this to continue higher, playing out in the next 29 days, and closing that trade in that window. So this will not go past 29 days. I don't want to be uh, having to sell something else against it um, any, from there. I just am playing this one. That's the position. It's a 425 debit, and what I'm looking for is for it to go to 8 50. So that's what I have for you. And if you have any comments, leave them below. We'll see you in the next video. Until then, good trading.